Hello, welcome to St Michael's Hill. Um, today we're going to do something a little bit different for me. Um, I went out at the weekend and picked up a, a new locomotive. Um, it's second hand, um, but obviously it's new to me. So I thought I would uh, open it for the first time and uh, have a look at what it's like, how it runs, and go from there. So the locomotive I picked up is, is this. So it's the Class 56 from Hornby. Um, I think it is the super detailed version. It's been something I've been looking for for a while. I was out the other week and saw it in a second hand uh, a section of a model shop, a uh, decent price. It was a good kind of 10, 15 pounds lower than what Hattons were selling a pre-owned one for. So I kind of thought I'd pick it up and uh, and see where we are. There's a few interesting things about the box itself. It's, in, it's, it's definitely worn, it's in a okay condition. It's interesting that it says steam locomotion, or so, so steam locomotive on the front. Obviously, Class 56 is not a steam locomotive. Um, but so that's quite an interesting thing. I don't know whether it's a case of Hornby forgetting to change the uh, the design or, or what, but uh, it's interesting. And then, as standard, really on the uh, on the back of the packaging, there's a little bit of uh, information about the class 56 um, and this uh, this particular uh, individual uh, class 56059, which was uh, withdrawn from service here. It says in 2004. One thing I do like about the Hornby packaging as well is the way they do the, the tops of the packaging so you can look down on what the locomotive looked like. Um, it looks like this uh, version of the Class 56 might have uh, working fans. They certainly look quite detailed on this picture so it'll be worth having a look and uh, seeing what we're at. So, first of all I'll remove this, the cardboard sleeve leaves us with uh, a box, uh, standard Hornby. I think we're looking at a polystyrene inner, but I'm not entirely sure. Obviously no uh, pictures, so there's nothing yet to see. Um, uh, as I suspected, the uh, packaging is kind of a polystyrene, although it's a yellow version, I don't know whether that's through age or just because that's the colour that Hornby were using. There is a bit of a, a block of ice type thing in here as well, it's quite interesting. So to get to the locomotive, so it's interesting, it looks like the, the detail has already been fitted and potentially it's been slightly weathered too, which I did not know. I don't know, I feel quite okay about that, <laughs> saves me a job if it's done well. So I'll just remove these... Uh, Straps at the end. Here we go. Ah, great. It's quite nice actually that some of the Hornby packaging with the uh, polystyrene previously has been very difficult to open. Actually, this is quite a nice change. So, let's just get out. Okay. So, I'm really impressed with the detail. Um, we've got a lot of details on the bogies, lots of pipes, um, very, very fine work here, which is very good. I'm really impressed with the paint job as well. The, uh, the lines are really, really crisp. Um, like I said, there's a few smudges and marks on it, but that's not something that I'm too bothered about because I'll be weathering the loco a bit more anyway. So some of this, uh, some of these marks on the bottom will be, um, just remove through the weathering process. So I'm really impressed with how the uh, the model looks. The detail is is very very good, as you can see. The bogey detail is great, and I think the weathering on here has actually brought out the detail even more, which is a really really good sign. Uh, as you can see, there's some super fine pipe work on the front here, um, and actually all along on all the bogies. It's good detailing within the cab as well, which is always a good sign. Uh, it doesn't yet have a driver, so it's going to be something I'll, I'll look to fit at some point. The doors are also uh, sprung-loaded, which is really nice. Just a nice little touch that I don't think many uh, models have at the moment, which is good. As you can see, the detailing on the front of the uh, the model is really good. Whoever has fitted all this additional detailing has done a, a really good job. It's come out very nicely. So that's, that's definitely a job save for me. It's all this will need is a, a little bit more of a, a heavy weathering um, and it'll be good to go. It probably needs to be chipped as well. I will test in a minute to see how we're uh, 
we're looking chip wise. Another really nice feature of the uh, the locomotive is definitely these uh, grills and fans. So obviously the uh, fans are well set within the grills and you can kind of see the mechanism. I think uh, I've heard that these are actually working fans, although sometimes there's a bit of an issue with um, the way they run and, and causing the loco to run slowly. So it might be something I disconnect at some point. On the second end, there's obviously no detailing. Um, and a small uh, tension lock coupler, which is good. It probably means it doesn't need any additional work from me. Really encouragingly, the weight of the model is uh, is, is really strong. Um, it's something that is obviously really useful, and uh, hopefully it means it would be a powerful thing that can pull a lot. I guess the next thing to do is just to see how she runs. Um, I've got a little test track set up. Um, on DC, which I'm sure this is, and we'll give it a run and see how she goes. And then I'll uh, I'll look into what chips required. And it's directional lighting, which is a, a big plus for sure, um, both front and rear. It's a little bit noisy at low speed. That clears up at a faster speed. I think she just needs a good run away. As we can see in no doubt here, it, it runs okay. It's smooth, but it's quite noisy. So I'm gonna have a quick look inside and see if there's anything that I can see um, that's causing it. I know with a lot of the Hornby motors it just needs a bit of servicing to uh, quiet them down a little bit. So uh, that's something we're going to do now. So now that we've had the test run, um, as you can hear, it's a little bit noisy. It runs quite smoothly, it's just uh, a bit of a whining noise. Um, so I'm going to open up the locomotive, um, have a quick look inside, see if there's anything I can see that uh, doesn't look great and we'll do a little bit of a, a service and then maybe add a little lubricant and uh, see if that makes any difference. So on the Hornby Class 56 there are four screws um, just under the bogey here um, so I just need to unscrew those and then I'll be able to uh, release the body from the chassis. It's a little bit fiddly to get inside. Going to remove the screws entirely. Carefully uh, placing them in the four corners that they are. Definitely a little bit tricky to get the screws out the way they're positioned, but uh, they are coming out. So now this upside down should sorry if I place this the right way up it should come off easily there we go lovely interestingly the uh, fans do rotate um, so I do wonder whether they should rotate, um, but aren't for some reason. I need to have a little further look into that. As the model is running a little bit um, noisily, 
I, I'm going to quickly lubricate the, uh, little bit of the worm gear and also the axles and see how that does. So here we go. Let's give that a quick test on the track. So after a little uh, lubrication on the axles, she's quite right down now and uh, isn't making hardly any noise at low speed and even at higher speed there's not too much of a noise at all. So the lubrications, uh, as you've seen, worked really well. Um, the uh, mechanism is running a lot more quietly now. Um, I think it does need a, a little bit more of a run in, so I will, uh, I'll give it half an hour each way and, and see how it goes. But I'm quite pleased with that so far. I will quickly give the uh, light pickups a little clean, maybe for a little bit um, dirty. So I'm just going to use a little bit of uh, nail varnish remover, very sparingly. Just a very small bit on a Q-tip cotton ball, um, and then take off the excess and just give the uh, the pickups here a little bit of a a clean. They're not too bad, but uh, it always helps. So when it comes to putting the body shell back on, um, one thing with the 56 you need to be very careful about is making sure that the uh, the light um, pickups are in contact with the, uh, the plates here. So I've heard that it's just a little bit of a tricky job, um, but we'll give it a go and see what's what. Body shell is slipped on quite easily. Just turn it over now and insert the screws. I'm going to place all four screws in first and then just place them quite gently and then uh, screw them home once they're all in place. That's the loco back together. I'm just going to check that everything works properly and uh, we'll be good to go. So she's now running a lot, lot better. Um, I'm very pleased with how that's kind of come out. Um, generally, as, as a purchase, I'm, I'm really pleased with it. It's uh, it's obviously not brand new and, and there are obviously a few issues that come with that. But uh, for a second hand model, um, I was very pleased with it. Once this uh, Loco's had a DCC chip fitted and I've added a driver and a second man, um, I think it'll be it'll be a great model. Um, like I said, it does need a little bit more weathering, probably to get it a little bit more dirty. Kind of uh, the EWS 56s around that sort of time were never kept too clean, so I do need to add a little bit of uh, of grime, especially to the roof. Um, the bogies and underside have obviously already been done to a degree, um, although I think that could probably be added to and then uh, certainly some weathering along the sides and, and the roof as I've mentioned so I think once we've done that it will be um, ready for the layout. Thanks for joining me today on uh, St Michael's Hill and uh, I'll be back soon. Cheers, bye.